Okay. Hey everyone, Rarity Dash here. Time for another Patreon sponsored Blind Reaction. And this one comes to you courtesy of Super Mana Man, who has requested that I react to a video called What's in an OP? My Hero Academia's Hidden Story by Mother's Basement. So, yeah, very interesting title there. I mean, uh, What's in an OP? Very, very good question. Uh, I mean, all the, all the My Hero OPs are pretty much awesome. So, uh, definitely a topic I'm happy to discuss. Uh, but, um, I wouldn't really expect, uh, I mean, My Hero Academia's hidden story, I wouldn't really expect the OPs to connect to any kind of story details, so that's kind of a bit interesting. Uh, I mean, obviously they're meant to be, like, thematically related to the show, but I don't think they really uh, connect to it in, like, a deeper or more substantive way, so... Um, yeah, not really sure. <laughs> it's hard to say from the title what this is really getting at, but I'm interested to find out. It sounds like it could be pretty cool. Uh, let's get started, though, and see. Here we go. Since My Hero Academia you. started airing... <laughs> pretty much. ...asking me wow. to analyze its openings. And okay. I can't blame you. Their fantastic music and animation makes them some of so the... So I guess this is what he does? Analyze openings? In recent analyze openings? But I've been hesitant to cover them because while they're really well put together, they're a little on the simple side, at least at first glance. They stick very closely to the standard shonen formula of character introductions, emotional beats of current arc, big fight scene, so there's not oh, so we're talking about the visuals in any given one. One, I, I see. Not enough for a full video if I'm not talking about interest curves, which I already did with Haikyuu, so, yeah, you know. However, I thought we were talking about the song. All together, a story begins to emerge. One that develops across each successive OP, showing Ka? the progress of Deku's relationship with All Might over yeah, the yeah. series and his own development as a hero. Today and next wow. week, we're going to <laughs> that and other details in these openings and figuring out God, which love that the scene. OPs is the strongest. So widely role. memed. This isn't the first time that Studio Bones has done this oh. with an opening. Ureka 7 did a great job Good show. Of building on character relationships from OP to OP, but it is the first time that they've placed so much emphasis on that connection, using shifts in the character dynamic as a jumping off point to set the tone for each OP. Speaking of Ureka 7, though, Bookwalker has a really great deal going on ebooks of the manga oh. if you use the promo code BASEMENT. If you've got any love for the classic <laughs> mecha series, or if you're just curious about getting into it, stay tuned to the end of the video to find out more. The first hero I got to push the sponsors. Day kicks off with a powerful spotlight lighting up All Might as he stands before Deku. We see All Might in several extreme close-ups before cutting out to the full view, highlighting the iconography in his costume, the vaguely American color scheme in the boots, gauntlets, and chest insignia, his nifty belt that looks like an angry owl, and his crazy pointy hair, not to mention his rippling muscles. Yeah, this paints yeah. him as he wants to be seen as a symbol of peace sometimes literally the ideal mm -hmm. superhero <laughs> something to be looked up at in awe. I think it's also kind of how, how Deku yeah, yeah, how Deku is it. That's about, it's exactly what I was He starts say. from a kneeling, subservient position, but then stands up, trying meekly to reach out to his hero. Mm -hmm. The shots, which never show the two in the same frame at once, and the pained emotion on Midoriya's face yeah. give us the impression that All Might is an idol entirely beyond his reach. But then All Might looks back, acknowledging his struggle, and the whole context changes. Suddenly Deku isn't just reaching out for an impossible goal, he's being challenged to catch up. Oh. This scene mirrors their first conversation on the rooftop from the end of episode one. The OP cuts away to character shots at the mm -hmm. critical moment. Midoriya's hand twitches right before the jump, but it's timed so that we can't really tell if he's pulling away nervously or starting to grasp at the dream he hopes to one day achieve. Hmm. The character yeah, shots we're really going in depth here. Straightforward, giving yeah. us a brief impression of each character's basic personality and design in time Mama. with music without lingering or expanding on any given one. Like the first season itself, the OP is content to simply show us that all of these cool character designs exist and yeah, trust yeah. that we'll stick around long enough to find out what they're all about <laughs> and actually has time to develop them. That mm -hmm. said, it is pretty impressive how they manage to encapsulate each character in a single pose, with Aoyama showing his ego by shoving his face yeah. against the camera, Ida looking overly serious as he always does, and Froppy and Ochiko 
looking just the cutest. <laughs> and it's truly amazing how much personality they managed to give Toru Very just true. using the gloves on her hands. That's, From there, uh, we jump to the title card, which fades that is impressive. Shot of Deku walking alone in the rain, with no coat or umbrella on a darkened overpass, while a huge crowd mills about in the well-lit street below. This shot does a great job of emphasizing the isolation and despair that Deku feels as someone without a quirk, making his dream of being a hero almost impossible, despite his optimism. To hammer that point home, as he sadly walks away, we see what he was looking at, a billboard oh, urging hero. people to become heroes or maybe sidekicks today. Deku continues his sad march home, the city a blur of abstract shapes behind him, as his hero notebooks flash by one by one, showing his determination, He's had a lot of despite those. of how impossible his dream seems to be. Another great design element is the way that these notebooks are constructed. The first one is written in badly misspelled hiragana, which is the <laughs> of three alphabets that Japanese kids learn in school. Hiragana isn't supposed to be used to transcribe foreign words like hero, and correct writing uses dashes to denote yeah. extended syllables rather than repeated characters. The way that Midoriya writes hero note on the first book That's is wrong. roughly the equivalent of spelling hero with two E's in English. His <laughs> writing gets better as he gets older, and eventually he switches to the katakana yep, alphabet, yep. which is katakana. used to sound out foreign words, but the and some kanji in there. enthusiasm and drawings of all might also disappear from the covers. The notes become less fun and more smart and practical. All the while, Midoriya stares at his feet, and eventually so do we, as he comes to a stop and the books come tumbling down, mirroring how Kachan tossed one of them out the window yeah. in the classroom. This makes a natural transition to a single shot that beautifully sums up the two's relationship. Mm -hmm. First, we see them as children, and while there's a divide between them, the dividing line is relatively smooth and calm. The pair smile at each other as friends, though judging from the woods around them, this is just moments before Deku pulled Bakugo out of the water, bruising his ego and ending their friendship forever. We they didn't actually fall out of the water. <laughs> childhood innocence of summer to spring cherry blossoms, with the pair now looking away from each other, and the and dividing the, line yeah, yeah. Them now much more it's a lot of and thought violent into this animation. Cherry blossoms are typically associated with graduation and the start of a new school year. In other words, yeah. endings and new beginnings. So in one shot, we know that sometime between elementary school and their graduation of middle school, these kids went from being friends to enemies, and that after entering the same high school, shown by the change in uniforms as we zoom in on their faces, their rivalry only got more violent. We can pick all of this up without having ever seen an episode. Of the, show. <laughs> the zoom in both brings them closer together and makes their emotions towards each other. Bakugo's cold anger at Deku and Deku's determination to surpass him fill the entire screen. And of course, the dividing line between them is now a chaotic, electrified yeah. mess. With each of these transitions, the inevitability of their future conflict is increasingly impressed upon the viewer, leading up to the explosive, angry punch that ties <laughs> off their fight during training. Out of that explosion, we see Shigaraki emerge, followed by a horde of villains fighting All Might and Eraserhead. There's not a lot to this fight beyond it simply looking cool, and of course the fact that it represents the USJ arc from the end of the season, but it looks really damn cool. It does! Even though they're minor characters, all of the villain designs are unique and memorable. The camera moves in a fast and dynamic fashion, and the match cuts between scenes just work, jumping from Shigaraki's open hand to All Might's, from a dust explosion to Kurogiri exploding into a black mist, from his eyes opening to Eraser Heads doing the same, and from this random villain to Deku's shoe. The last <laughs> one might seem a little strange, but the design of the villain's coat looks kind of like a shoe. It does. Watch the I, I full speed, all of see it what just he's flows at. together like magic. It's really satisfying and fun to watch, as is the sequence that follows, where the most important members of class 1A show off their superpowers one by one. There's not much narrative meaning to it beyond, hey, here's some cool heroes, look what they can do, but it gets you no Momo. nonetheless. That leads into a beautiful shot where Deku morphs into his hero costume, then throws a punch as his fist rapidly swaps out with All Might's, with mm -hmm. the purple energy of One for All coursing in the background, showing his struggle to carry the torch from his mentor. This is followed by all of the characters who weren't important enough to join the earlier 
lineup taking up battle poses two at a time in front of the ua logo before we see a final group shot of the whole class getting ready to defend their school at first i was a little bit upset i do like how momo Toru and kyoka was relegated to are uh, second together here, but then i noticed that she was actually included in the montage without her gloves or shoes right here and she shows up at other points in the op here here <laughs> and also here and hardcore fans will notice her reflection here so oh best girl gets yes, the most yes, screen time yes. as she should mm -hmm. the day is a pretty incredible opening Toru fan more art. to it than first meets the eye but they only get more complicated from here the second opening Peace there we Sign, go kicks off with a triumphant choir chanting deku standing proud atop a high rise and all might soaring through the air in front of him there are a few important points of contrast between this and the opening shot of the first op the most obvious is deku's expression rather than looking meek and lost he looks confident and self-assured yep, yep. and he no longer reaches out desperate to grasp at his idol instead he stands confidently observing all might in mm -hmm. action that confidence comes from knowing that he's on the path to reach all might one day his hero still soars above him but deku's not just kneeling on the ground anymore he's already ascended to the top of a building and he's preparing to leap up to that height the two are no longer surrounded by a glowing abstract void but a very real physical cityscape deku now knows his place in the world he also has a much clearer idea of who all might is instead of seeing him as a jumble of heroic attributes the reflection on the building as he flies past it shows us his full body and face not only does that tell us he's flying really fast it implies a deeper understanding on the observer deku's part the first 10 seconds of this opening are rightly spent building up to a single fantastic wide shot the shift around deku makes us wonder exactly what he's seeing and the payoff to that is great instead of simply looking up at all might we see awareness on deku's part of how he fits into that picture we're seeing something that we never saw in the first op here the two of them framed together by themselves in a single shot all might may be high up and far away but this implies that he's reachable though even if he wasn't that wouldn't stop deku from trying as we see in the beautiful first ed of the series mm -hmm. we cut back to deku's face smiling up at his hero and the title card fades in over top from the title we jump to a montage of each student warming Where'd up to a sports festival the stretches they perform are pretty simple though well animated and each student trains with a look of intense determination on their faces this sequence serves as a suitable build-up to the action climax of the op but there's a little more to it than that the places where most of the students train hold significance to them bakugo's is maybe the most obvious he's doing warm-ups in the building that he and deku yeah destroyed yeah during their first training exercise at the school signifying that he's still hung up on the loss and eager for revenge uraraka is training on what appears to be <laughs> not Blanche. sure he's pronounced everything quite right deku had to clean up in order to earn the power of one for all this signifies her worries that she's only gotten to where she is because she's relied on deku and her other classmates and her desire to accomplish more by herself i think ajiro is just included here to fill time though since he's not all that important he's not arc, and while the arc should have been momo develop his character a bit his rivalry with tetsu i mean she's not important either but if you're gonna have a filler yeah, character my guess is that he's probably here because he was super high up on the jump popularity pool but that's just a theory wow uh uh, you know <laughs> nice also feels a bit fillery although the fact that he's stretching in the darkened outskirts of the stadium where he receives the news that his big brother was attacked by the hero killer stain could be early foreshadowing of the next arc of the series that would possibly cast his cold expression here in a new light by the way in a nifty easter egg you can catch i think we did get some good Ida development though too right i mean we catch up with deku stretching on the same rooftop we saw at the start it was the before the actual Leaning tournament it was like in the the determined the look on cavalry his battle. face directly into the sun. I guess he and Donald Trump missed the same memo. Jokes aside, the sun represents the heroic ideal of All Might here, just as the star that Deku was chasing in the first ED did there. Deku has his sights set firmly on that goal, but when we cut to Todoroki, we can see that his view of that ideal is clouded, literally, by his pride and his hang-ups about his father. Deku and Todoroki are posed in almost the exact same way here which creates a sense of visual continuity between the two scenes as well as a 
point of comparison between the two of them. The fact that they face in opposite directions hints that there's a conflict yeah. between them that will be the focus of this arc, which is confirmed when Todoroki turns to face Deku in the group shots. The two of them are hmm. the only students to move in these shots, aside from Eijiro, which almost seems like he's misreading the atmosphere and thinks that he's the protagonist and the one that Todoroki is challenging. <laughs> that would be a bit out of character for him, so I think they just felt like they needed more motion in the shot to give it a bit of an extra punch. But even the stationary characters are all posed in a way that conveys a bit of their personalities, yeah. and as always, Toru manages to be the cutest wow. out of the wow. lot, despite I mean, not being visible. There. Going back to what makes Todoroki doing that hand down, thing, see sunlight washing over him as the clouds overhead pass, seeing clearly for the first time in a while what it really means to be a hero. When he turns, he turns toward his left side, acknowledging that his father's powers are part of him. This all foreshadows the transformation that he will undergo during his incredible fight with Deku, which I'm going to be talking a lot about in a separate video, so stay tuned for that. Although that fight is what we see next after the group's <laughs> Yeah. Off. These action shots are pretty damn beautiful, but there's not much to analyze here again, except for the obvious symbolism of seeing Deku blow away Todoroki's ice. They mainly just offer a glimpse of what's going to happen during the tournament while showing off the powers of each respective classmates. They're good Man. action shots aside from this weird insert, but they're not quite as cool or cleverly cut together as the action from the first OP. That said, the shot of All Might leaping across the entire city is pretty damn impressive of animation, maybe the best we've seen in these OPs so far, and it creates a solid sense of continuity with the start of the OP. When All Might Good lands, point. oh hey look, Toru, when All Might <laughs> lands, the camera spins around him, briefly showing us the That's same great. heroic pose from the start of the first OP, but then he turns to face us, and with us, Deku, who we see when we zoom back through the crowd, standing and staring him down with the same pose he had on the roof. This shows that the whole class is united by the same ambition to become heroes, even Bakugo, and that's going to become important. Later. Yeah, it yeah. also establishes that very important to reach All Might. Deku will need to surpass all of his classmates and even his teachers. The way that All Might lands could also be a reference to the start of the final exam arc, but they reference that more directly in the next. Episode, well, yeah, I which mean, it... we'll get to in a week. The oh. last shots give our main characters one so more. We're be covering the first two this time and out of these there's a notable contrast with how deku throws his punch in the first op he looked wild and desperate and his fist was mixed up with all might's here he looks a bit more focused and collected and we see only his fist showing greater ownership of one for all the last shot that we see is another group action mm -hmm. pose with the whole class in costume leaping into action all headed in the same direction with looks of joy on their faces except for the Perpetually sour Ida and Todoroki. In other words, they are all happily heading toward the same heroic ideal. This is a great shot with lots of visual variety. Every character feels distinctive and their poses are really fun, except for Yuga Aoyama, who is weirdly static and out of place. Like yeah! Just forgot to draw him and then just took a stock standing pose and dragged it up to the top of the screen where everyone else is flying. In a final flash, we see the group shot shift colors to a yellow background with heavy shading reminiscent of the style of Western comics and, more notably, the shading style used for All Might, hammering home that idea that they're all being inspired by him. The final frame of color is a little more overt about this, the oh. whole group painted in UA white and blue, ready to get into the tournament arc. The third opening, Sora oh. ni Uteba, does some interesting things with its end card too, but we'll have to get into that next week, when we'll also be comparing all three openings to figure out which is the best. And boy, it's been well, a so while. This was before. One of those, huh? If you're itching for something to do in the before meanwhile, season more three, bones I content, guess. I recommend giving the Ureka 7 manga a read if you haven't already. It's got a lot of interesting differences from the anime, so even if you've seen that several times over, and who can blame you if you have, it's great, it's still worth giving a read. And you can get a lot of reading in with the deal that Bookwalker has going. Between now and October 2nd, a few days before part two of this video will go up, if you buy three volumes of Ureka 7, you'll get a 500 yen discount coupon that you can spend on anything else on the store. The volumes are 600 yen each, 
So if you combine that with the promo code BASEMENT, which gives you a 600 yen discount on any purchase, you're essentially getting three volumes for the price of one. And they have a similar sale going cool. on for Slice of Life manga if you want to carry that first coupon over and get a second one. The Bookwalker phone app makes it super easy and convenient to take these volumes with you so you can read on a commute or in bed or on the toilet, don't judge me. And these wow. are very high quality scans that let you zoom in super close so you don't have to worry about missing any details in the artwork. You can pick these volumes up at global.bookwalker.jp and of course you can use the discount code to buy anything else on the store that might catch your eye, including volume 3 of Konosuba, which was just recently released. Let me know in the comments below who your favorite character from Hiroaka is, and while you're down there, Momo. don't forget to subscribe and join the notification squad. Or join my Patreon like all these wonderful people if you want to support me more directly. If you're interested in seeing me talk more about Hiroaka, check out the next part of this video here, unless it's not out yet, in which case that'll link to a comparison between Hiroaka and Naruto, or click over here for an OP analysis of the other great superhero and anime One Punch Man, which just broke a million views! Woo! I'm Jeff That's Lou, impressive. professional shitbag, reminding you to never skip the openings. <laughs> well, I never do. I mean, not when I'm reacting, at least. Um, but uh, there we go. <laughs> that was actually pretty interesting. He broke that down really well. I, had, I mean, uh, when I'm watching it, I register that it's, like, really good, but just recognizing all the thought that went into it, uh, makes it even better like uh, I mean there's just every aspect of it is uh, really thought out and uh, it's kind of impressive to see attention called to that um, yeah yeah that was that was pretty cool I uh, <laughs> not what I thought I mean when I when I hear OP I, I more think the song that's really my I just I because I often with anime OPs, eventually I'll end up listening to listening to them uh, in isolation without the visuals. So uh, when I hear what's in an OP, I think about, yeah, the music. <laughs> Not so much uh, the animation going along with it, but uh, that's indeed what we were talking about here. And it uh, was pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if the patron's going to request part two, but uh, if so, I'd be happy to watch it. Uh and uh yeah this was this was good this was a pretty uh pretty cool video um yeah anyway uh don't think i really have much else to say about it though i mean it was pretty straightforward in terms of uh what it did um and um i love the toru stuff i gotta say that again <laughs> i mean i already said that but i just love his, his running joke with toru how she was how she was in it more than anyone else i um yeah i mean he could be right we would never know uh but yeah yeah good good stuff uh very very fun video hope you enjoyed the reaction let me know if you did and see you in the next one